begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse. Morning Radio, baby. How you guys doing over there on Spotify, Instagram, all the other platforms, especially my people over on YouTube, baby, and Facebook. Guys, rock and roll. Today's show, oh, Hollywood's in the mood, baby. <laughs> anyway, let's cut that off. You know, I'm actually next week going to be doing a lot of work in the studio. Going to do a whole different backdrop, the whole nine yards. So if you're over on YouTube and Facebook, don't freak out. I know I'm going to be changing things around, you know, getting it a little more. I don't know. How can you say it? Uh, I don't know. You'll just say, okay? You'll just say. Boy, did I have to eat my damn words. And you know what? I'm a man of my word. I said if anybody could actually prove to me that the Pagans Motorcycle Clubs were going after citizens, I would come back if they gave me a source and they proved it and say, hey, I was wrong. And that I don't approve of it. I got that story. Uh, actually, I got a couple stories. <laughs> Boy, did I have to eat them words, man. Here I am trying to defend this and that. And they're going to say, well, you know, you always say it's only a few that do it. And I truly believe that. I do not think that the whole club freaking sanctions some of these stuff that happens. But... To the one that challenged me, I have to say it doesn't look good. And that the cops are going to use it as propaganda. So, you'll be hearing about that. Boy, we got all kinds of stories about them today. I couldn't believe it, man. It was like one after another. See, I subscribe to the Associated Press and all that stuff. And it leads me to these stories off the wire. I was like, damn, dude, they got a hard on for these guys. Now, I've seen it in the past where clubs were always messed with, but damn, this is like out in right field, man. This is like getting worse than that Texas stuff down there. Then you get all these people, well, you said they don't take gang members, blah, blah, blah. And then what do you do? You give me a source. And I was like, man, what the hell? I do look like I have egg on my face from that episode, but at least I'm man enough to say it. You know, you try to believe the best in clubs, and then people, they find the worst in clubs. It's kind of, it's like a challenge to these people. It's like, oh, Hollywood said this, now we got to prove them wrong, which is good. You got to keep me honest. I believe in that. But damn, you guys go out there and look, because after that show last night, uh, I actually looked around, couldn't find anything, and boom, here comes the emails from this person. I was like, damn, man, that just happened the day that came out, man. <laughs> I should have shut up and waited for a while. That way I don't look stupid. So, I have to do a rare retraction of my statement about clubs not targeting citizens. Sad state of affairs, man. Because if that does continue... It's going to be putting a lot of pressure on clubs and independents and all that good stuff. I uh, There's some Reddit stuff that I read, and it has to do with a lot of news. And one guy came on, and it was talked because I actually did an episode. It's coming out uh, Saturday morning, 8 a.m., Motive Log, whole nine yards, where I talk about outlaw bikers and why they prefer Harley-Davidson and stuff. For those that aren't educated, don't know the history, all that jive. Well, one of these posters put, I wish they wouldn't. Because all they do is bring the heat on us regular bikers and make us look bad. And that one kind of hit me in the gut right there. Reason being, is I already know support for clubs are way down. And that's why you see a lot of people shh, nowadays offering patches to anybody and anybody. Because they need the numbers. 
But when you actually start seeing it, and you look at the profile pics, yeah, these guys have been riding for a while. Uh, you just know. And then they're saying uh, this about clubs, and it's like, damn. I didn't know just how bad it really was. When clubs lose support, that's a terrible thing for the scene. I guess it comes down to, yeah, they're one percenters, but they're being looked at pretty bad by the rest of the community. And all that's doing is, see, it used to be, and I always talk about how it used to be, because, you know, it was better times for me. It used to be you just stayed on your side of the thing, you didn't get involved with them, you seen them, you walked away, it didn't really freaking matter, independence, it didn't matter to them if you wore a patch. But now, people are actually siding with Leo. That's one phenomenon I never understood. Because bikers, it was all about the rebellion. It was all about doing your own thing. That's the fuzz. Stay away from them. Don't cross that line. And it kind of seems like the attitude has really changed. You have a lot of people now standing behind Leo. And it's not just the rubs. We're talking hardcore scooter tramps that I've known. I've, I've seen it done. They actually side with Leo. Damn, they're riding in parades in support of Leo. Something that would have been unheard of. So you got to sit back and ask yourself. Is the actions of a few in a motorcycle club really turning off the rest of the scene? Are they turning everybody against them? And if that's the case, how is the fight for club profiling, biker profiling, how is, you know, the biker rights organization going to thrive when people don't want nothing to do with that? I talked about how everybody's thinking has changed, uh, especially in this video coming up about riding clubs. I always support riding clubs. Why? Because it's the closest that you're going to get to what the way tradition was when it first started out after World War II. Everybody used to just go ride on the weekends, have fun, party. They didn't get into any of this political crap, all this politics between clubs. It was just a pure thing, and that's why I like a true riding club. And what I mean by true riding club is one that's not trying to act like an MC. And I talk about that in the Moto Vlog coming up Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, by the way. Because after I talk about why they ride Harleys and stuff, I'll get into the riding clubs. But a lot of people, they are pissed. Pissed when they email me saying, well, why are you all about this riding club stuff? They ain't real, this and that. Well, explain to me what your definition of real is. What is your definition? You're the same people. The very same people. And I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to bash the protocol channels right here. I'm not. I'm just going to put it out there. You guys draw your own conclusion from what I'm about to say. It is the same people that write me about how the RCs are not real that are the ones that go to these protocol channels. To learn what? To learn what? I love BD stuff. You know, he's more into the 99% stuff. He actually really tries to help with subjects that will help people not get hurt. But there's others out there that give protocol advice. And you got these fake web pages. I always talk about them. Even though we know who's behind them, it's still like, really? You're an idiot. They'll say, which club is supposedly right? Which one's a pop cup? These are the same people that go to these other channels for advice. 
channels that are speaking out against pop-up clubs. But they'll sit there and say, well, this is what an officer of a club's supposed to do, or this is how you're supposed to ride. They're giving advice to that very same person they're bashing. The hypocrisy, it kills me. If you know, for example, if you're given a video or a podcast, whatever the hell you're doing, on an officer's position. Why the hell do you feel the need to give that kind of information out if you do not believe in guys going and starting clubs out? That's what everybody says. Hey, that's a pop-up club. But you got guys out there giving advice on, say, how to start a motorcycle club, how you're supposed to run this, how you're supposed to run that, how you're supposed to be an officer in a club, what their position in the club means, and how you're supposed to vote, all that stuff. You're giving them the information. Does not that not seem hypocritical to you? But you guys are bash on me because I support riding clubs? I, 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 I don't get it. Would somebody please tell me that? Why do you have protocol channels, protocol shows? You'll bitch and moan about these guys starting up the clubs, but you'll put out material that helps them do it. It makes absolutely no damn sense. Same thing with these Pages that are fake saying, well, this is a fake pop-up club or this and that. Half of them been through three or four freaking clubs within a span of a year that are running these pages. So we're, uh, that's hypocritical in itself. But these pages will support these different protocol channels. And how they're giving advice to start up a pop-up. And then they go back and bash on the ones who actually did for listening to them. That's why I always say, hey, wait a second here. Get on the damn street, man. Learn what the hell's going on out there. Don't go to these channels. Well, you already you always send people to BD. That's because he was an ex-national president who had to deal with this stuff, and he's only talking about 99 percenters. He's not talking about 1% stuff. 1 percenters don't go on YouTube to tell other freaking people what to do. They're too busy for that crap. So, go on like an Instagram page. You know, I kind of stopped there. I'm like, my God, they are really freaking hypocritical. Go on an Instagram or go on freaking Facebook. You'll find these stupid pages. They've been part of I don't know how many clubs and they're freaking trying to call others out. That's why they do not give their identity. And what's even more sad, you, I've seen actual one percenters from big clubs agreeing with this shit but they don't know who's behind the page if they knew who it was like we did they'd flip shit because it made them look stupid that's why you gotta watch out on the internet you wanna learn stuff go do it if you think you're gonna go and learn something off of youtube as far as this protocol crap is concerned Go for it, man. But you have to step back like any normal biker would, because I always say bikers, you know what? They try to see through the bullshit. They don't try to let somebody pull something on them. Well, again, it, it used to be that way. It ain't like that now. But you got to ask yourself, if you're watching somebody and they're bumping on freaking people just picking up and starting a club, 
there's something wrong, man, because they're given the advice to do it. You know, I get it. YouTube, all that stuff. Me, I love the radio. We make our bank over on the radio. And I'm not sorry to say that because that, you know, you think a show's for free? You, th you know, it costs us. <laughs> but YouTube or Facebook and stuff, that is where people go, man. That's where the money's at. So if money's the issue... At least make the content where it don't look hypocritical. You got creators copying other creators' videos now. I couldn't believe this. You don't know how many creators actually copy off of Black Dragon. They just, they just change the titles around and give their opinion. He's been around, what, three freaking years? I guess it should be flattery that everybody's copying his stuff. But at the same time, it's like, dude, you know what? You're talking this, you're talking that. But you're doing the complete opposite. And one of these days, I'm hoping these protocol channels, because that one email that was sent to me, well, I got my ass whooped and they beat me and da-da-da because of this and I listened to this guy. You guys better put a damn disclaimer on your videos, man. That, hey, this is just an educational purposes only. Don't take it as gospel. This might not be the way it is on the street. You better cover yourselves, man, because there's people out there getting beat on because the advice that those channels are given. Every time I see one of them videos, I don't care what creator it's from, and... You know, I'm not trying to make a blanket statement against everybody. I'm just saying that every time I see some of them uh, videos, it's like, damn, man, you get your ass handed to you in Chicago for some of that crap. That just won't roll, man. That's why I always say it's local here. And that's another reason why I support RCs, because they don't have them issues. It's a one-piece patch. Most of the time, they don't even have RC on it in Chicago. It's just a one-piece patch, and it's done. Why deal with all the drama? Why deal with all the politics? But when you see people all over the country talking about this or that, that shit's local, man. Make sure you guys understand that. And make sure whoever you're following. See, I unfollowed Everybody except like Black Dragon, Adam Sandoval, because I like the bikes most of all. I don't like all the drama with all the MC stuff. Yeah, I cover it in the Biker News because that's our platform is Biker News to inform people. But my personal taste is I'd rather watch Adam. I'd rather watch John. Them guys, because that's what I believe the lifestyle is about. And there's so many more that I watch that do a lot of moto vlogs. Because the club stuff ain't me. So why, you know, that, when I first started, yeah, I was talking about it. And then I realized, you know what, this just ain't my platform. I'm a biker news guy. Why the hell do I want to get myself involved in that bullshit? Because I don't. Because I don't want to be responsible for giving my point of view. And next thing you know, somebody gets hurt. You Now, a creator maybe never know that. They might not know somebody gets hurt off of their advice. But I can guarantee you they do. Because let's just uh, you know cut to the chase. The people going to these uh, creators, they ain't the smartest cookies in the bunch. They don't got it all together if they think they got to go to somebody, uh, what, what you know, that like Easy Riders used to put in in the 90s so you to watch a rally and stuff, them video series. What It's just like tattoo videos. You think you can learn a, a tattoo off of a freaking video? No, you got to do it. You know, that's basically the same freaking concept. You just might as well start packaging all these protocol videos. Sell them like that. God knows people will freaking buy them because they're that dumb. But when I really 
you know, because I talked to BD and I seen his videos were being taken and everything's being copied from him. And I looked at him, uh, you know, I tell them, I feel sorry for you, man. You really worked hard on all that stuff to build your channel. You went through all the crap to do it. You were called all kinds of racist names. Uh, you had threats against your life and putting all that work in and all you're doing is trying to help the community and other channels are stealing your ideals. What kind of crap is that, man? That's some weak ass shit right there. It, it's straight up, that's weak ass shit for some of these people to do that. You know, it's always funny in the scene. Bikers or whoever always want to flex that chest, man. You don't know who I am. Dude, who gives a shit? Really? Who cares? You know, the only thing that matters is when a man's standing in front of a man and it's going to get on. You know, that that kind of crap might work on some weak ass, but no, that shit don't work on everybody, man. And that's what's so discouraging about the scene. And I kind of talk about that in the Moto Vlog because you don't have to wear a three-piece patch to be involved in this scene. The only damn thing you need to do is get you on two wheels and go party, man. The stuff that I'm about to read isn't the scene as a whole. Maybe because I'm kind of pissed I got to retract because that really bugs the hell out of me when I have to retract something that I said. Uh, but hey, it's my own ignorance because I put it out there going blind. Next day, it bites me in the ass. But a lot of the stuff I read on the news and give my opinions on, it's a very, 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 very small percent of what happens in the scene. You know what mostly happens in this scene? The charity that bikers do. The runs, the rallies, the parties. Not all the political BS between clubs. That ain't the scene. I'm going to have a story coming up about the first guy that freaking uh, ran this one run and won it. That's the scene. Not all the bad stuff you hear. You always got to remember that bikers and most of them are hardworking people. They ain't gangsters. And like I've said in the past, when I was in a club, damn, man, there was people that have a lot of problems paying them dues. So if they were gangsters, they wouldn't have that problem. I just wanted to be, I think, real in this segment. Because the takeaway is, you just got to learn this stuff on your own if you want to be an MC. You got to look for things that are hypocritical and goes against what they're trying to teach, I guess I'm trying to say. You know, that's the best way I could uh, describe it. So, let's get into the news after this little segment of a break here. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari, host of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Check me out over on Instagram at Insane Throttle Biker News and join in on the discussion over on our YouTube channel at Insane Throttle Biker News Radio Show. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Well, we're going to go to this one first. And this one I kind uh, find kind of humorous here. Out of the press of Atlantic City. Wrong to the shore canceled! But pagans still coming to Wildwood this weekend, police say. They basically shoved it in their ass. Anyway, members of the Pagans Outlaw Motorcycle Club are expected to be in the resort this weekend. Police said, even though an annual motorcycle event they frequent has been canceled. Well, you have a right to assemble where you want in this country. 
You don't need a rally to assemble a club. I guess they didn't get that memo. Police are aware members of the club will be in the city, Police Chief Robert Regbuto said Thursday, adding he doesn't know what they'll be doing as there's no event attached to their visit. Maybe they just want to, you know, see the sights, maybe. Well, everybody's welcome here. Anyone who rides a motorcycle is welcome to come to town, Mayor Pete Byron said. Well, wait a second. That's not what you said in your statement about closing the event down because you blamed them being undesirables, I think it was, for attending. But now all of a sudden, you're welcoming them? So why did you cancel the event? I don't get it. I don't get your uh, thinking here, Mayor. We just hope they remain respectful and regard the rules of, on the governor's orders. Well, who the hell wants to freaking follow the governor's orders? What, let me guess, mask and social distancing, right? We welcome everyone to town. No, you don't. No, you don't. Hypocrite! The Pagans are a fixture at the Roar to the Shore, an annual motorcycle event in the city, as it's a, quote, mandatory club, or member, uh, club run for members in the state. However, the event was canceled this year after the city denied organizers necessary permits, according to the event's website. Again, you canceled it, so now you're saying they're welcome. The city paid about $40,000 for police overtime at least at last year's Roar to the Shore, according to previous reports. In a Facebook post, police listed 26 arrests during the event for charges ranging from possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose to possession of a controlled dangerous substance. How much you want to bet it's weed? When are they going to take weed off the, you know, level one, man? I don't get it. But it was unclear whether all charges listed were filed against Roar participants. Of course they're not going to tell you that. It don't fit the narrative. The motorcycle club is undergoing a resurgence, growing, oh, going from 20 or 10 chapters in the state in 2013 to 17 of last year. According to state investigators, there are roughly 900 pagans nationwide including anywhere from 150 to 350 in New Jersey. On Wednesday, a report from the State Commission of Investigation detailed incidents, and this is where I got to eat crow, involving the group in recent years. Club members beat a landlord in the city after he tried to evict a woman connected to the group and beat a bar owner with a pool stick after he didn't pay for protection the group offered, according to the report. <sighs> yeah, I have to eat crow on that one, but I'll eat crow in a minute. Now, let's go over to California. Hells Angels Club president ordered released on $1 million bail in Rico murder case. Feds are appealing the decision. This by Nate Gartrell of Mercury News. A federal magistrate judge signed off on the release of a high-ranking Sonoma Hells Angel member who is facing criminal charges that he participated in a plot to murder a fellow club member who had fallen out of favor for the notorious biker gang. But the Thursday morning order by U.S. Magistrate Judge Virginia DiMacci is not the end of the debate. The U.S. Attorney's Office is appealing the release order, meaning that the defendant, Jonathan John John Nelson, will remain at the Santa Rita jail for the time being. I thought you had a right to bail in this country. I'm just asking. If Nelson's release is approved, he will be required to adhere to certain conditions. He is forbidden from interacting with other Hells Angels members, or going to clubhouses. He is, will also be uh, forbidden from using a computer or the internet and be limited to a flip phone. I always wonder, how the hell do they even track something like that? Nelson, named by, because uh, it is e easy to get a VPN and you can use Proton. If you ever want a very secure email, it's Proton. Nelson, named by federal prosecutors as the president of the Hells Angels Sonoma chapter, was indicted in 2017 
as part of a large-scale investigation into the Hells Angels. Eleven club members, most of whom were tied to the Sonoma Club, were charged with racketeering and engaging in serious violent crimes, including murder. Like I said in my opening, this is only a very small portion of what the scene is all about. I hate when people make the basis of their judgment on clubs from what you know they hear or read. But Nelson's attorney has painted him as, quote, father, son, coach, and small business owner who is well respected in the Sonoma area, one of the biggest defense points in favor of of release in Nelson was that he spent several months out of jail after the 2017 indictment. He was detained in September 2018 when prosecutors filed new charges that made Nelson eligible for the death penalty. I thought California, you got a freaking moratorium on that. I knew they'd do in Illinois. When the government decided not to pursue the death in this case, Nelson's attorney had moved for him to be released from jail. Quote, I believe one important fact in Mr. Nelson's favor was his previous good performance while released in this case for over nine months on the previous indictment. Also, it is clear that the fact that Mr. Nelson no longer faces the death penalty was enough to tip the balance towards his release. Nelson is facing charges that he conspired with several other Hells Angels to murder Joe Silva, a former Hells Angel sergeant at arms who prosecutors say had fallen out of favor with his club members. Prosecutors allege that Nelson lured Silva to the Frenzo clubhouse where another member shot him in the head. Silva was illegally cremated at a nearby funeral home. Brian Went, the president of the Fresno Hells Angels chapter, is alleged to have pulled the trigger. So that is still happening, and it is a RICO case. I think uh, I suggested that was this is the one I was talking about. Anyway, good news, good news. Out of hometown news, Volusia. Edgewater Biker wins challenge on first try. Badass right here, baby. In his first time as an entrance, Edgewater resident Dustin Diesel Arledge came in first ahead of 136 riders from around the country in the 2020 Hokey Hey Motorcycle Challenge. And Dominic, he actually was he actually did one of these, he told me. It's a big business, not all who started finished. Some crashed and had to withdraw due to injuries, and there was one fatality. Sad state of affairs, our condolences. As of this writing, some are still returning. The challenge is a 10,000-mile test of endurance, patience, and skill. At least once, Mr. Arledge wanted to quit, but driven by the spirit of his best friend, Jason Edward Dell, the quest to test his own resolve and the veterans he was riding for, he kept on going. Rock and roll, man. This year's challenge started in Panama City Sunday, August 9th. It sent motorcycle riders to checkpoints in Vermont, Arkansas, and New Mexico, and back to the city of Panama, well, Panama City. Mr. Arledge participated to raise money for the nonprofit Honor Our Vets. As a veteran, he is medically retired from the United States uh, Marine Corps due to his injuries sustained during Operation Azada Wosa in the Helmand uh, province of Afghanistan, he heard about the Hokahe Motorcycle Challenge after uh, about five years ago. Although not a race, order of finish is recognized. He arrived back in Panama City at 6.04 a.m. August 19th. His welcome home party was at the First Turn Restaurant in Port Orange, August 30. Quote, well, for the most part, I was doing two hours sleep naps and riding for 22 hours. I wanted to do well for my organization and I wanted to do well for myself. It was tough. Day three, I hit a breaking point. I laid on the concrete, fell asleep, and had some really weird dreams. The most challenging part is your loss with yourself. It was an emotional roller coaster. Things from the past came up. 
Very good congratulations right there, buddy. Way to freaking go. That's an endurance right there. Uh, let's go to uh, Corey Graff's wall of shame real quick before I get into the other pagan story. Retired police officer arrested for guess what? For molesting of a minor. Go figure. Freaking Como. According to a release, the alleged abuse took place between 2015 and 2016. Retired Clearwater Police Department Officer Stephen White, 48, is behind bars after the sheriff's officers say he molested a 12-year-old kid. You sick freak. The Pinellas County Sheriff's Office began investigating on March 3rd when the girl disclosed the sexual abuse while in the hospital. Detectives say through their investigation they learned of two incidences where White entered the girl's bedroom and exposed himself and touched her with his genitalia while he slept. Must be great thinking you got power over a 12-year-old kid, you freaking sick bastard. I can't wait till they get you behind bars. Better yet, let the parents have him. Or is he the parents? Oh, that's even more sick. According to the Reese, the alleged abuse took place between 2015 and 2016 in White's Pinellas County home. Well, there you go. White was arrested and taken to Pas uh, Pasco County Jail where he was charged with lewd and the vicious molestation of a child under 12. When retired in November 2019 from the Clearwater Police Department after serving nearly 19 years as an officer. Quote, during his career with the Clearwater Police Department, there was any, never any indication of this type of complaint against Officer White. We have no knowledge about the case involving the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, but we are disheartened and troubled to hear about these type of allegations involving someone who once worked for our agency. You guys all know what I think about that one. Anyway, here's another story out of NewJersey.com. I said this is a story I'd eat, uh, Crow. An inside look at the Pagans Motorcycle Club and the threat it poses to New Jersey. The man's only mistake was passing a Pagan. He was cursing on his motorcycle on Route 1 in Elizabethtown when he passed two other drivers on the right of the multi-lane roadway. He didn't think anything of it when he exited the highway, but soon realized he was being tailed by a motorcycle and a car. He made a series of terms, but couldn't shake them. Then they cut him off, blocking his escape. It was at that moment it became clear the man was dealing with two members of the Pagan's motorcycle club. Quote, do you know who we are? The Pagan yelled at the man. The Pagans beat him with the small bat and wrench, officials said. The victim would file a police report but quickly rescinded it, fearful of retaliation at the hands of one of the most dangerous outlaw motorcycle gangs in the country. Seemingly, random assaults like these on the citizens of the Garden State have officials at the New Jersey State Commission of Investigation urging law enforcement to take action. A report released Wednesday by the group, an independent state watchdog formed in the 60s, the one I bashed yesterday, to investigate public corruption and organized crime, says the Pagans have increased their membership ranks. Not only are there violent attacks on rival biker gangs like the Hells Angels and the Warlocks, but a newfound level of aggression has led to drive-by shootings, savage beatdowns of adversaries, and unprovoked physical assaults I'm members of the public. In another incident, a man was in the bar in Elizabeth, the city dominated by the pagans, when he started talking to a female bartender. A pagan approached him and threatened him, a police report said. Later, the same pagan and his two of his companions ambushed the patron, hitting him twice in the head with an axe handle, a weapon of choice for the pagans. The man told police he had never seen his attackers prior to that evening. <sighs> okay, I ate crow. There you go. You wanted to see Hollywood eat crow. I ate crow. You gave me proof, okay? Uh, let's see here. 
uh, we already covered this one. Pagans beat Wildwood Landlord, bar owner, as membership grows. Let me see if I really did cover this one. Uh, no, I didn't cover the landlord. Members of the Pagans Outlaw Motorcycle Club were responsible for the recent beatings of two business owners as club membership and violence continued to grow. Club members beat a landlord in the city after he tried to evict a woman connected to the group and beat a bar owner with a pull stick after he didn't pay for protection. If true, what can you say? Can you know you say, hey, are they a motorcycle club or a motorcycle gang? Again, it could have been just members on acting on their own. I don't know. Uh then it talks about the fixtures and stuff. But we're going to go into my final thoughts, everybody. I know you love seeing Hollywood eat crow. And I'm a man of my world. Wage a fight in it, brother. By Insane Throttle's very own James Hollywood Match Garden. New Age of Fighting and Brotherhood will take you on a journey of the now. best and present fighters. Get your copy on Amazon and all major book retailers. Rock on. Yeah, New Age of Biking and Brotherhood is available on all online major book outlets. Also going to be getting uh, a load in here. Uh, books that I'll be signing if you want a copy of those. It's going to be 15 bucks with uh, shipping and all that good stuff included. I'll let you know when I get that. Also, we're going to be running a contest. Yes, Long Rider is uh, sponsoring the contest. So I'll have more details on that Monday. You're going to be able to get free uh, New Age of Biking and Brotherhood signed, the whole nine yards. We're going to get uh, the community involved. So after, you know, I said I'd eat crow if you gave me the proof. And here I do. I eat crow. You got me. You got me. You know, I have to say, you know, the be fair, you know, the story came out afterwards. But hey, man, in my word, I'm going to eat crow. And people are going to be saying, well, see, Hollywood, this does happen. Well. You know, I can keep to my argument that only a few people do it. Uh, hopefully the club as it's, you know, a whole doesn't support that stuff. I really don't think a whole club would. But, hey, who knows, man? I'm not in the club. I just report on it. And I can give you some of my opinions on what I think. And if it's true, I think it's BS, man. Because once you start going towards citizens, you're doing nothing but bringing problems on your club at that point. And you're not gaining any friends with independents and other writers out there. You're going to start seeing a lot more people that, uh, like that post on Reddit I said, they really wish that outlaw clubs wouldn't ride Harleys because they give Harley riders a bad name. They're losing support all over the country. I don't know how it is in Canada. I don't know how it is in freaking Australia. But here in the United States, I know the tide is pretty much turned against clubs. A lot of people are saying... Uh, that's a thing of the past. That's, you know, not what people want now. And it could be evident in the membership and how low it is. Uh, I know a lot of guys uh, my age and older, uh, they're all past that stuff, man. You know, people got families. People, uh, you know, sure, they enjoy the brotherhood, but they just don't want into any of the drama and stuff. And boy, am I seeing it played uh, out all over the place now. And again... What people see in the biker news coverage is not exactly what's happening actually on the street. Yeah, you see, you know, pieces of it, but you can't blame the whole club for what's going on. At the same time, you got to ask yourself, well, wait a second here. They're saying they're a motorcycle club and not a motorcycle gang. Do they have to revamp their image off of something like this because if you're doing these kind of things yeah people are gonna call you a motorcycle gang now i'm just ble being devil's advocate here trying to get both sides of the argument i can see why some people would say that after seeing a story like this 
Well, you just said it's not the whole scene. It isn't. It isn't. But the few things that go out to the public, this is what they see, and they automatically form an opinion. And one of the things that I don't understand is if you attack citizens, and I guess uh, Ali Crow, yes, Ali Crow again, but they're the ones that vote. They're the ones that vote for the people who make the laws, the ones that are targeting the clubs. They're also the ones that are going to go to the cops nine times out of ten. They're going to be sitting on the juries that are freaking judging maybe your club brothers. I always understood club between club beefs. But once you get into a beef with the freaking citizens... Now, that story might not be true where they pulled over somebody, beat them because they passed them. I wasn't there. I don't know. All I'm doing is reading what I got uh, sent. And if you're going to make an opinion on that, I don't know what to tell you, man, because I can't argue against it where, you know, this is what it says. If it, I'm just saying if it happened. If it happened, it was bullshit. Because, what, you're going to beat somebody for passing you because you got colors that's one thing i never understood man because you're not winning any friends you're just making enemies and then you make it hard for people to actually support motorcycle club rights at that point and i thought that was the whole goal was to try to get motorcycle club rights out there on the brains of everybody including the citizens because just because you got bikers standing behind it, you got to get the citizens behind you so they can help get the law changed. But it makes it really tough, really tough when stuff like this is in the news. Now, let's just say, hey, what, you know, if they tried to get a resolution passed through the New Jersey uh, legislator, you know, like they have in other states about... Banning motorcycle club profiling. It's not going to happen. Legislators are going to be pointed to this crime commission. And they're going to say, no way in hell are we going to vote something like that. No way in hell. So not only does it hurt the one percenter clubs. It hurts everybody riding with the patch all the way down the hog because these cops don't know all they do is see you in the harley and they're about 50 feet back they see you have a patch and you're pulled over before they realize you're just a hog member because they pulled you over because you know they thought you were a three-piece patch I, it just causes a lot of freaking problems you know one of the i should have put that freaking uh, reddit post up because it must have had two to 3,000 responses. Almost all of them agreed. Now, yeah, they might be rubs. They might be this and that. But it just goes back to saying, you know, you need more support if you're going to get these legislation and all these laws passed. Just saying, man. I, I'm just saying. Uh, as far as the other stories, uh, the hokey hey. That was awesome hearing that he competed his first time and he won that thing. And it takes a lot of endurance, a lot of emotional control to win that thing. More or less complete it. So our hat's off to him, man. That is a beautiful thing there, baby, what you did for yourself and them veterans that you represented. Awesome freaking stuff, man. Awesome. Going back to my opening monologue. Hopefully everybody understands, you know, my point of view on it. Again, this is my point of view. You might say, you know what, screw off, Hollywood. Okay, cool. But I ask you to look at the hypocrisy of people trying to teach others when supposedly these channels don't believe in pop-up clubs. Just saying. Leave your comments in the comment section about that. Here is my question. 
if somebody does not believe in pop-up clubs or earning their patch, should they be able to, uh, should they be teaching the very people that they say shouldn't be doing it in the first place? Knowing that they'll take the information wrong and just run and start one off anyway. And I know the comeback, well, we teach that so people don't get hurt. <laughs> people are getting hurt. That's what I can say on that. So anyway, if you haven't gone over to the Hollywood and China Dow show, I think you're really going to love it, man. We get raw over there, like I said. Uh, get on over there and subscribe. The information's in the description box of all the show platforms. Really appreciate all the help. Um, don't forget, Saturday morning, 8 a.m., Why Outlaw Bikers Ride Harley Davidson's and Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. We'll see you on Monday morning, guys and gals. I'll talk to you later. We'll be right back.